Hello and welcome back to our Brogue tutorial. Uh, so last time we left off, uh, I kind of left a cliffhanger saying that we we're going to talk about what's up here. Um, but before I get into that, there's something I remembered that I wanted to mention about staffs. So last time we found a staff of obstruction, um, and earlier I also talked about how you can use enchantment scrolls to enhance your armor and weapons. Um, well, when you use an enchantment scroll on a staff, we haven't used an enchantment scroll yet, but when we do, if you use it on a staff, it will both increase the effectiveness of the staff as well as add the maximum number of charge add to the maximum number of charges. So, for example, if we used a scroll of enchantment on this staff, it would then become a staff of question mark out of 4 instead of out of 3. Um and on top of that, since it is obstruction, it would make it so that the size of the obstruction we can create will be larger. Uh, so like the green blob of crystal that we can create can be larger. And as of right now, we don't know exactly how many charges we have. It's probably zero, maybe one if one is recharged since we last used it. But um, we won't be able to really know consistently what it is until we use a scroll of identification on it. Uh, so with that, well, let's get to over here. So as you can see, we were able to kind of see through the wall right here into this area earlier. And that's because there's a statue here. You can see through statues, a marble statue. And marble statues are always along the edges, or usually are along the edges, of a treasure room. And you can see right here there's some carpet on the floor. There's a rapier. Uh, let's go over there and see what we can find. Oh, we've got another statue right here we can see in. And what do we got? There's a diamond ring, splint mail, rapier, a pewter wand, a health charm. So, yeah, this is the symbol for a wand, this is the symbol for a charm, and this is the symbol for a ring. And as you can see, all of these are sitting on little altars, candlelit altars. Uh, so we have to figure out how to get into the treasure room. Usually, the way to get in is through a iron door, so there'll be like an iron door here and you have to find the key somewhere on the level to unlock the door. Uh, but this one's a little bit different, that's not the case. Um, so the thing about treasure rooms and all of the different like puzzles in this game is each puzzle or treasure room is has a solution that is self-contained with the depth that you're on. So the solution to getting into this uh, can be found using items that are on depth 3. So you don't have to find something on a different depth to be able to get in here. I have to know how to get in here and I'll, I'll explain it in a bit. But um, yeah, so you never have to worry about having to go explore different depths in order to solve like a puzzle like this. Uh, and the splint mail is actually reminding me of one thing. Earlier, we actually found some splint mail, and I haven't really mentioned it that much. Uh, as you can see, it has a strength requirement of 17. Uh, we only have 12 strength, so that's not going to be very helpful right now. But later on, when we find some strength potions, we might be able to use it. Um, but as you can see, it also doesn't have the armor rating right here. Hmm. So the reason for that is when you very first find armor or a weapon or a ring um, just lying around somewhere, there is a chance that it could be cursed. So you don't want to just go put on random armor or equip random weapons or, uh, or a random ring because, yeah, there's a chance that it could be cursed and cursed items are really bad. So what will happen with a cursed item is, instead of having a positive enchantment or a plus zero enchantment, it'll have a negative enchantment, which is worse than just standard armor. And on top of that, you won't be able to take it off. So if I were to put this on, which I wouldn't do it anyway because I only have 12 strength, if I were to put it on and it was cursed though, I wouldn't be able to take it off, and I'd probably end up with the armor rating of zero, considering what my strength is. And on top of that, since it's so uh, heavy and it requires so much strength, it would also increase my stealth range by quite a bit. So let's see Let's see what it says on here actually. So thick plates of metal are embedded into a chainmail base, blah blah blah. Um, 
carries a penalty of negative 12.5 because I don't have enough strength. So yeah, uh, if you don't have enough strength for armor, you almost never want to wear it. Like sometimes you can use weapons. Um, sometimes weapons are okay because especially with stealth attacks, you'll always be able to hit with a stealth attack and there's still kind of a pretty decent chance you can still hit enemies with it. Um, but yeah, armor is almost never good to put on if you don't have enough strength for it. Um, and I won't actually know if it is, well, if I put it on, I'll know if it's cursed, but I won't know like what the negative enchantment is on it right away. The only way for me to find out is if I wear it for a thousand turns. That, or if I use a scroll of identify on it, it'll tell me automatically what the negative enchantment is. Um, and then I'll just have to keep wearing it until I either use a scroll of remove curse, which uncurses all of the equipment in your entire pack, uh, and then I'll be able to take it off. Or if I use a scroll of enchanting on it, which is a huge waste, you basically never want to do that because as I've mentioned before, enchantment scrolls are super useful and important for getting um, powerful items, so you don't want to have to waste it on a cursed item. Uh, let's see what else about armor. Um, another thing that can be on either armor or weapons that you find, there's a small chance that it could be runic, and that basically just means it has some magical property. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different runics in the game, so I'm not going to go into the details of what they are, but like an example would be uh, like a armor of troll resistance, uh, which makes it so that trolls, which spoiler alert is a monster that you come across later in the game, makes it so that if you're wearing that armor, trolls can't hurt you. That kind of a thing. Uh, there's also negative runics, which are bad, and they do stuff like maybe make you spontaneously catch on fire, things like that. So those are the reasons you don't want to randomly uh, put on armor or equip a weapon, because they can be stuff like that. Um, and the thing that you do usually want to do is wait till you get a potion of detect magic, because that will put a positive or negative symbol or just a neutral symbol next to all the items in your pack, including your armor and weapons, and then you'll know if they are cursed or blessed or just normal. So, uh, yeah, for now we're just going to let that be. The nice thing, though, is in treasure rooms, all of the items in treasure rooms are never cursed. So these are safe, so we know we can at least grab one of these. We just have to figure out how to get in there. Um, and I happen to know that... Typically, the way you get into a room like this, uh, there's this statue right here. There is a scroll called a scroll of shattering, which will fragment like all of the walls around you and make them all turn into that green crystally structure that we saw with the Staff of Obstruction. And it'll melt away the walls, including this little statue right here. So typically, the walls directly around a treasure room is magic proof, but this little statue isn't. So uh, the direct walls of the treasure room won't be affected by a scroll shattering, but the statue will and it'll let us get in if we can use that scroll. And that scroll will have to be one of the scrolls that we found on this depth because all of the puzzles are self-contained within each depth. So let's check if we've found any scrolls on this depth yet. I don't remember. Uh, we found these on a bunch of different levels, so who knows. Uh, depth 1, that could be one of them. It looks like we've got one right here, Blot Bloto Lofa Irma. Do we have any of those? Yeah, we do. Well, we'll keep looking around, and then we'll start testing some scrolls after we've explored the level, and hopefully one of them will let us into this room. Okay. Got some water over here. There's cobalt down there. Also, in case you're wondering, I believe it's a 20% chance that random armor or weapons that you find could have a positive enchantment, and there's a 20% chance that they're cursed, and the rest of them are just going to be normal. And then 
on top of that, it's a certain percent chance that they could be runic also. And runic armor is like super good. Like you want positive runic armor. Oh, there's an eel. Uh, positive runic armor, armor is the kind of armor that you're going to want to keep around for most of the game and can potentially be one of your items that you pour all of your enchantment scrolls into. Oh, all right. So right here we have a paralysis trigger. So in this game, there's little traps that have, it's like a pressure plate. If you step on it or you throw an item on it, it'll trigger it. And sometimes there will be little vents on the floor in the room or nearby rooms of a pressure plate. So if I or an enemy or I throw an item onto that pressure plate, paralyzing gas will come out of these vents and paralyze everything in the room. It'll give me like a paralysis status that will take a certain number of turns to go away. And while I'm paralyzed, I'm completely vulnerable to getting hit. So uh, we're def definitely not going to step on it. Uh, let's grab this food. So yeah, you can see all these vents. If we were to step on it, gas would come out of all of these. Sometimes it's good to like lure a strong enemy into a room like this and then when you're a safe distance away throw an item onto the pressure plate so that the enemy gets paralyzed and when the gas disperses you can walk back into the room and kill the paralyzed enemy while he's vulnerable. But for now that's not something we're going to need to do. All right there's the staircase. A kobold. All right. Oh, there's a monkey up there. Oh, there's a scroll. Maybe that's the scroll we're needing. Oh, great. All right. I stole some food. All right, well, let's hit it. And now we got to throw our darts at it. Oh, I missed twice. Come on. Okay, got him. All right. Snarg, Flux, Nurglo. We don't have any of those, so I'm willing to bet that that is the scroll of shattering that we need to get into this room. So let's head back over there. Looks like we've explored everything else. There's a kobold. Uh, something that I just remembered. Uh, you can move diagonally in this game, but not around corners. So like if there's a big mob of monsters, a lot of the time it's good to get into like a corridor like this and only one of the monsters will be able to hit you because they can't hit you diagonally like that, typically. And you can fight them one at a time or if you even back up a little bit then you can fight just one at a time because that's a pretty frequent scenario. All right, so let's apply. Oh, actually, I think it was this one, but I'm gonna double check. Um, found in depth three. Okay, let's apply it. And there we go. What did I tell you? The scroll emits a wave of turquoise light that pierces the nearby walls. Must have been a scroll of shattering. All right, so now we'll just wait for this uh, green crystal to dissolve. And then we can go through. There we go. We made it. Oh, there's another piece of armor right there. Okay, so... Uh, the nice thing about treasure rooms is that it helps you to identify items. Once you get into the treasure room, it'll identify stuff. So this is a wand of negation. So now we know what all the wands of negation are. As well as staff of lightning and a ring of regeneration. So we now know what all those are for the rest of the game. So that's pretty nice. And we also know scroll of shattering because we just used it. Um... All right, so let's see. Banded mail, health charm, a rapier, splint mail. So the thing is, these three items right here, the armor and the rapier, there's a chance they could be like blessed, but I have no idea what the chance is. Um, another effect that the potion of detect magic has, I didn't mention yet, is that it also reveals on the map, these blue or red symbols, all over the map it'll show uh, where positive or negative magic items are on the whole map, uh, on, just on the depth that you use the potion. 
including the treasure rooms. So let's see. We've got room for five more items. Um, right now, Ring of Regeneration is really good. Uh, it allows you to slowly gain health over time. So I'm probably going to take that. I don't have any weapons really yet, but uh, we're going to go with a Ring of Regeneration, I think. Uh, one thing that I could do, though, if there was a different item that I wanted, I could go to the next floor and fill up the rest of my pack, maybe get a couple extra potions, and then come back and try out potions until I hit a potion detect magic, and that would allow me to know whether or not these are blessed, and then I might grab those instead of something else, but I think we're going to go with a ring. Uh, and so, oh, and in case you're wondering, yeah, you can't grab all of these items. You can only pick one. I'll show you. So I'll grab the ring. You now have the ring of regeneration. I step off and a cage lowers and covers all the rest of the items, so I can't take any of them. If, for some reason, I change my mind later or right now, you can step back on and hit D for drop. You can drop the item that you took, and you can grab a different item, but it has to be the item that you took originally. So, even if I did, like, explore further down, I'm like, oh man, I really actually need better armor, there's no good armor, I might want to risk coming back, even though it waste time because my nutrition slowly drops. Um, I might want to come back and replace the ring and grab this, for example. Uh, but we're going to take the ring. Um, if you look at the ring, uh, it says it will reveal its secrets if worn for 1500 turns. Um, basically it just makes my health regenerate faster when I wear it. Uh, so the thing is, it could be a ring of a certain well, all rings have like a certain enchantment level, so it could be plus one, plus two, plus three. I believe that's the highest it can be. I don't think it could be more than that. But it could be, uh, hopefully it would be plus three or something like that. But until I have its secrets revealed after wearing it for 1500 turns, it'll just act like a plus one ring. Um, and if I wanted to identify it sooner so that it automatically reveals its secrets, I would have to use a scroll of identify on it. So yeah, you can use a scroll of identify on any item pretty much that isn't identified, so like a potion, oh I know what the violet potions are now without using one, or a scroll, or armor that I don't know whether or not it could be good or bad, um, or a ring, or a staff, but typically the only one that you're going to want to use it on is staffs, because staffs do not automatically reveal this number. Um, if you wear a ring for long enough it'll eventually automatically reveal its secrets and It'll do that by itself. Armor will eventually reveal its enchantment level by itself. Weapons, if you kill... We, we haven't gotten any new weapons, but... Oh, actually, we have the javelins. Yeah, if you defeat 20 enemies with a javelin, then it will reveal its secrets. But javelins are never cursed. I, I don't think I've ever seen a cursed javelin. Uh, maybe they are. I, I just don't think they ever I've ever seen them cursed, so... Um... Yeah, so since we got this from a throne room, we know, or not a throne room, a treasure room, we know that it's safe so we can equip it. Now wearing the Ring of Regeneration. And like I said, you can wear up to two rings, so for now we've got this one. And let's see, is there anything else we need to talk about over here? I don't think so. Um, Alright, yeah, I'm, I'm still not going to drink my potions yet, I'm going to wait till I have a full pack. And also, since I've already explored this level, if I do drink my potions on the next floor, and it happens to be a potion of Detect Magic, it'll also reveal uh, the positive or negative magic of all of the items that are on the whole floor. So, it's best to wait till you're on a mostly unexplored floor so that you can get... Uh, maximum usage out of a potion of detect magic and all right for now we're going to end it there talked about throne room or <laughs> i keep calling them the throne rooms treasure rooms actually before before we leave let's talk about uh the, the charms real quick yeah let's talk about charms real quick so let's drop this ring so i can grab the charm charms the way they work so right here it says a plus two health charm Charms are just like, you use them, and then over time they'll just recharge. 
kind of like a wand, I mean not a wand, kind of like a staff. So if you can see right here, when you use the charm, will heal 40% of your health and recharge in that many turns. And then I can use it again. If it's enchanted, then it'll heal me for even more and it'll take less time to charge. So every time I enchant it, uh, the amount it heals me goes up and the amount of time it takes to recharge itself goes down. <clears throat> I believe that's actually the same with a staff, so the amount of time it takes for them to recharge also goes down. But uh, that's basically how a charm works. Um, and here, I'll use it right now. I might as well, So even though it doesn't do anything. So I'll hit apply. All right, you feel much healthier. It doesn't matter because I had full health. But if you notice right here, now it says 0%. So over time, that percentage will slowly go up so that I know how close I am to having it being fully recharged. And if I wanted to, if I use a scroll of enchanting on it, it'll automatically make the charm usable again, plus it'd become plus three, and these new stats would apply. But we're not going to bring the, self, the health charm. We're going to drop it back off right here, and we're going to use this ring instead. All right, so with that... Yeah, we'll continue in the next video.